Hi, in this video I'll show you how to do a lookup for the last item. Usually if you've done lookups before, lookups usually bring up the first item. So for example, we've got item one here and item one here. If you did a regular lookup, by default it's going to look up the, and you want to bring back the sales price, it's going to give back 452, not 47. But there's instances where you want to look up the last item, and I'll show you two examples of how to do that. The first one is going to be using the XLOOKUP function. Now this is a more newer lookup function available in Office 365, uh, the subscription model. And I'll cover another one if you don't have the Office 365 using the index match. But let's go into the first example. So the first example, we're going to use XLOOKUP. You just type XLOOKUP. I'll just tab that to complete it. The lookup value, I'm going to look up this value. What's the lookup array? Let's move this one a little bit. Move my little tip here. What's my lookup array? I want to look up that array by, I'm going to look up that value, but with this array or this list of items, comma, and then with the return array, I want to return back the sales, right? So I'm going to return back the sales. Uh, let's see, it's B2 to B10, comma, and then if not found, so this is an option where you can put in, if it doesn't find it, what you can, what you can do. I'll just say not found. I'll just put in quotes not found. You can you cannot you can just put a comma in there, but I'll just put that not found there. The match mode, this could be an exact match or a wildcard match. I'm just gonna put a comma, a, ignore that one. And this is the area where we want to look up the last item. So we have search to first as default. This is what we want. Search to last minus one. You can see that minus one in there. And now it's found it. It's right, 487. I've looked up item one. It brings back that last one, 487. So you can see if I put just one there it's going to bring back 452, which is that first one. So that's how we do a lookup for the last item using the XLOOKUP function. Now, if you don't have the XLOOKUP function, you can use the index and match combination. So I'll put index. What's my array? Well, I want to bring back this particular list, right? So when it does a, it does a find, it's going to bring that back. Let's move this one down here, comma, my row number. So I have to do a match here. So I'm going to match. Now here it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to put in the number two, and I'm going to explain that a little bit later on, but just stay with me here. So we have two, and then we'll put a one divided by open parentheses, the A2, the list of names, whoops, A2 to A10. That has to equal the name here that I want to look up. Close parentheses, close parentheses, and close the last parentheses, press enter. And now we have 487, which was item one, which is that last item. So if we tried another one, let's try item three. It should bring back 429, item three, press enter, you'll see 429. So let's see how this one works. This one's an interesting one. So I'm going to go into the formula evaluator, go to formula, and go into the evaluate formula. And this is what it's doing. Click on evaluate. And the first thing it's going to do, it's going to bring back those, that list, right? The names, item three, item five, that list here that we did. And it's going to see which one equals the item three here, our looked up value. It's going to bring back a bunch of trues and falses. The trues and falses are going to be either zeros or ones when we do the division or, or NAs. So we click evaluate again. We'll see our, well, the divide by zeros. So we have our divide by zeros or one, right? So the way that we set up this match is when we do the division, when we look up the number two here and we're looking at a, an approximate match. We didn't have an exact match for this one. By default, if you don't put any of the, like the zero or one, it's gonna do an approximate match. It's gonna look for the next match that is closest to two. So it's gonna look at this first one, one, because we have item three here. There's gonna be three instances. One, there's gonna be three instances of one here. One, this one, the first, second, and third. So it's gonna look at one here, and it's gonna pass that. These, it's not gonna look up because they're divided by zero errors. It sees the second one there, and it sees a third one there. So match is gonna look at the last one that was an approximate match. It's gonna look at that value, that last one here, which is this 429, and click evaluate. But that's what it's bringing back. It's gonna bring back that particular match, which is in the eighth setting, or the eighth place, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna bring back that eighth place in that index or that array. And so it's going to match that with the sales, which is going to bring back that 429, which is in, which is in the eighth place of this list. Click evaluate and we have 429. So that's how that particular 
set of formulas is working with the index and match. You can see it's a little bit more to think about, but if you had the X lookup, it's just a little bit easier and there's a lot more options. It's a nice option in uh, Microsoft 365. If you didn't have Microsoft 365, the subscription, you can use the index and match combinations. So that's the way that we can do a lookup for the last item in the list. Hope that helps. Don't forget to subscribe and check out another playlist of videos I've got right here.